There is an online daily devotional that I enjoy called D365. And this week on Wednesday, the writer shared this story. In the middle school cafeteria, I saw a girl going through the lunch line and take her tray to another girl already seated with friends. I thought it really odd. I found out that the one serving the lunch trays was paying the price to be their friend. She had to be a servant before she could be their friend. I complained to my mother I would be the next one serving lunch because they were the popular girls and I wanted to sit with them too. Now I knew how to earn their friendship. My stunned mother asked, why do you want to be friends with people like that? The next day, I made my way to the front of the lunch line and used two tickets to get two trays. When I saw the servant get in line, I waved her over and I told her I already had her tray and asked if she would sit with me. She started to cry and then we laughed together over lunch and became good friends. Don't worry about the popular kids. I want to eat with you. That's one of the messages that this parable shares. Allow me to set the scene of our Bible passage this morning. Jesus is sitting around the table with a group of Pharisees. They're distrustful of him and they are keeping a watchful eye. Already at this dinner, they've seen Jesus heal on the Sabbath and have essentially been chastised for where they chose to sit, each attempting to take the place of honor for themselves. Jesus also admonished them not to restrict their invitation only to those who could reciprocate. Despite all of this, or perhaps because of it, One of the dinner guests starts off our passage this morning by announcing, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Now, I used to read this exclamation as one of joy. Hooray! We are all blessed. But as I've grown older and I've learned more and more about how people react when society's norms are challenged, (coughs) excuse me, I've developed a little bit of a different reading of this passage of the, the Pharisees' words here. Well, actually, Jesus, anyone who eats bread in the kingdom of God is blessed, not just the poor. Some may call it more realistic, some may call it more cynical, but I can't help but hear it in this way. So Jesus does what he did best. He responds by telling a story. He shares the story of a rich man who had been preparing to host a banquet. When the time had come and everything was ready, he sent his servants out to gather the people that had been invited. One by one, the rich man's peers sent their regrets and excuses. One cannot attend for reasons of security. He has just bought some land. To our modern ears, this may sound like a bit of a cop-out, but in first century Palestine, owning land was a big deal. It was the most reliable source of income and a wise investment. Essentially, it was a massive business deal. When we put it into these terms, it seems reasonable for the first invited guest to back out. I've just sealed the biggest deal of my life and I need to check in to make sure things are running smoothly. The next potential guest excuses himself because he has just purchased five yoke of oxen, a reason of prestige. Again, this would have been a huge deal for the area and the time period. Few farmers in first century Palestine had any oxen. Having even one yoke or two oxen was rare. 
but this man had just purchased 10 oxen. This development in his life would have been this man's 15 seconds of fame, akin to winning the lottery or being elected mayor. It's another fairly reasonable excuse. The final invited guest that we hear about declines to attend because of family. He has just been married. This perhaps is the easiest excuse for us to understand today. Maybe next time we've just returned from our honeymoon. Security, prestige, and family are all good, reasonable possibilities for why someone might turn down an invitation and attachment to these things isn't inherently bad, but it can become problematic when we are too tightly bound to even the best of things and intentions, we can find ourselves looking back over our shoulder or dragging our feet as we attempt to follow Jesus. The word attachment comes from an old European word meaning staked to or nailed to. If we stake ourselves to worldly things, it can stunt our spiritual growth. After being turned down by each of his peers, the man hosting the banquet becomes angry. He sends his servants back out, but this time their instructions are different. Bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Bring in in the people who society ignores is what he's telling them because they won't be ignored any longer this parable serves as a stark and even at times uncomfortable reminder that god seeks out the weak even in the face of rejection god continues to look and make room for the many the rich man seeks out those whom society has marginalized. And when there is still room after he throws open his doors to them, he sends his servants out once again to compel them to attend his party. Not only does he invite, the, invite them, but he insists that they attend. This parable asks us more questions than it answers, I think. And some of the questions are hard, even uncomfortable to think about. What kind of banquet are we offering? Do we offer the kind of experiences that people want to attend or that people want to avoid? Who is on our invitation list, and is our invitation as far-reaching as Jesus's? An honest reading of this parable should make us just as uncomfortable now as it did for the guests who first heard Jesus tell the story. It's a stark reminder that God's invitation is all-inclusive, and that God specifically seeks out those who are usually excluded. Commentator G. Penny Nixon shares a story of a church celebrating communion. Now, this wasn't a Presbyterian church, so there may be some phrases that are different from what we're used to hearing, and I wanted to be upfront about that to reduce the potential for being distracted by unfamiliar turns of phrase. And what she writes is this. The round table was set in the center of the sanctuary. The elements had been consecrated. The servers were in place at the front of the sanctuary, and people began to line up to receive communion. The invitation had emphasized that all were welcome, regardless of church membership, faith, or belief. The bread of consecration was left on the table, a round piece of pita bread. As people were coming forward, the pastor looked up just at the moment when a visitor grabbed the bread of consecration off the table and began to eat it. 
Fortunately, the pastor reached him before the ushers did. Their first impulse was to protect the sanctity of the table. The pastor gently accompanied the guest out into the foyer, and it was only then that she realized that the guest had no shoes or socks. His tattered coat offered little protection against the cold. He had taken the bread because he was hungry. He was simply hungry. After all, communion is about feeding people, and when the invitation was offered for all to come and eat, that is just what he did. I think it's easy for us to get wrapped up in the pageantry of church. It's so easy to become like the ushers in this story or the Pharisees from our Bible story. We say that all are welcome, but when someone approaches who challenges us, our first instinct is to rebuff them or re-educate them. It's a very human instinct, and it's one that even Jesus' disciples fell prey to more than once. We are in good company. However, this parable is a challenge to us to examine exactly who we are inviting to our lives' banquets, and even more so, to really stop and think about who we actually expect to show up when we declare that all are welcome. This morning, I will leave you with a poem by Emily Dickinson. Written in 1864, this poem called Unto Me, I Do Not Know You is a beautiful salute to this morning's passage. Unto me, I do not know you. Where may be your house? I am Jesus, late of Judea, now of paradise. Wagons have you to convey me? This is far from thence. Arms of mine, sufficient phaeton, trust, omnipotence. I am spotted, I am pardoned. I am small, the least is esteemed in heaven the chiefest. Occupy my house.